Hello and welcome to a video presentation on dividing fractions and mixed numbers. Here's what you'll learn. How to divide fractions and mixed numbers. Let's start with dividing fractions. Dividing fractions is a simple three-step process that I call keep, change, flip. Step 1, keep, stands for keep the first fraction as it is. Step 2, change. We're going to change the operation from division to multiplication. Step 3, flip. We're going to flip the second fraction by writing its reciprocal. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a reciprocal? Well, take a look at this fraction, 3 over 7. You have the reciprocal of a fraction when you take the numerator of one fraction and make it the denominator of another fraction and take the denominator of the first fraction and make it the numerator of your new fraction. So 7 over 3 is the reciprocal of 3 over 7. Let's work some examples on dividing fractions now. Let's solve 1 sixth divided by 2 sevenths and express your answer in simplest form. We start by writing down the expression 1 over 6 divided by 2 over 7. Now keep the first fraction as is. We'll just rewrite 1 over 6. Change the operation from division to multiplication. And flip the second fraction by writing its reciprocal. So 2 over 7 becomes 7 over 2. Now that we have a multiplication problem, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator and denominator? to make the problem easier to multiply. Take a look at the numbers here. In this case, no, there's nothing that can be reduced. So that means when we multiply, our answer will already be in simplest form. So let's go ahead and multiply the numerators together now. 1 and 7 will give us 7 as the numerator of our answer. And multiplying 6 and 2 will give us 12, the denominator of our answer. So our answer is 7 twelfths. Let's solve 10 over 11 divided by 5. First, let's write down the expression 10 over 11 divided by 5. Now, I want both of these numbers to be fractions, so I want to turn 5 into a fraction, and I can do that by putting it over 1. So let's rewrite the problem now as 10 over 11 divided by 5 over 1. Now we're going to keep the first fraction as it is, so rewrite 10 over 11. We're going to change the operation from division to multiplication, and we're going to flip the second fraction by writing its reciprocal. So 5 over 1 becomes 1 over 5. Now that we have a multiplication problem, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator and denominator to make the problem easier to multiply? Take a look at the numbers. In fact, we can. 10 and 5 have a common factor of 5. So let's go ahead and divide both of those numbers by 5. In the numerator, 10 divided by 5 changes the 10 to a 2. And in the denominator, 5 divided by 5 changes the 5 into a 1. Now, can we reduce any other numbers in the numerator and denominator to make the problem easier to multiply? Now the answer is no. So our answer is already going to be in simplest form. Let's go ahead and multiply the numerators together now. 2 times 2 will give us our numerator answer of 2. And 11 times 1 will give us the denominator in our answer, 11. So our answer is 2 elevenths. Now let's solve negative 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds. Again, let's write down the expression negative 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds. And we're going to keep the first fraction as is, so I'm going to write negative 2 thirds again to start. We're going to change the operation from division to multiplication. 
And we're going to flip the second fraction by writing its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. Now that we have a multiplication problem, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator and denominator to make the problem easier to multiply? Take a look at the numbers. In fact, there's a couple of things we can do. The 2's top and bottom will cancel out by dividing each by 2. When we divide the top and the bottom 2's by 2, they become 1's. And the 3's top and bottom will cancel by dividing each of those by 3, and they become 1's. Now we can multiply the numerators 1 and 1 together. That's going to give us a numerator of 1 in our answer and multiply the denominators 1 and 1. That's going to give us 1 in the denominator. But we're not done. We have to figure out the sign on our answer. Our first fraction is negative and our second fraction is positive. Now we remember a negative times a positive or a negative divided by a positive is going to give us a negative. So the answer will be negative 1 over 1. And of course we remember that any number divided by itself is just 1. So our final answer is negative 1. Now let's divide fractions and mixed numbers. Let's solve 4 and 1 fifth divided by 7 and 7 tenths. Again, express the answer in simplest form. We start by writing down the expression 4 and 1 fifth divided by 7 and 7 tenths. Now we need to convert both mixed numbers into improper fractions. Let's start with the first mixed number. That's going to become 5 times 4, which is 20, plus 1. So we're going to have 21 over 5 as an improper fraction for our first mixed number. The second mixed number would become 10 times 7, which is 70, plus the numerator 7, which ends up being 77 over 10. Now let's go ahead and convert the problem to multiplication with keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction as is. So let's rewrite that as 21 over 5. Change the operation to multiplication. And flip the second fraction by writing its reciprocal. So 77 over 10 is going to become 10 over 77. Now that we have a multiplication problem, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator and denominator to make the problem easier to multiply? We have some big numbers here, so I'm going to give you a couple seconds to take a look at those numbers and see if anything can be reduced. In fact, we do. 5 and 10 have a common factor of 5. So let's go ahead and reduce the 5 by dividing by 5. That's going to change it to a 1. The 10 divided by 5 will make the 10 a 2. There's also another one. Did you get this one? The 21 and 77 have a common factor of 7. So that means 21 divided by 7 becomes a 3. 77 divided by 7 becomes 11. Are there any other numbers in the numerator and denominator that we can reduce to make the problem easier to multiply? Take a look at the red numbers that we have up there now. And the answer is no. There's nothing more that can be reduced in this problem. So when we multiply now, our answer will be in simplest form. We can now multiply the numerators 3 and 2 together. That's going to give us 6 in the numerator of our answer. And we can multiply the denominators 1 and 11. That's going to give us 11 in the denominator of our answer. So our answer is 6 elevenths. Let's wrap this lesson up now with a word problem. We have a piece of wood or a piece of lumber that's 8 feet long. How many 2 3rd foot pieces can be cut from this board? Well, first of all, we need an expression to solve. And since we're cutting a board into equal lengths, 
each piece is going to be two-thirds foot long, we know we have a division problem. The eight-foot board is being divided into two-third foot pieces. So let's write that down. Eight divided by two-thirds. Now let's go ahead and turn eight into a fraction again by putting it over one and rewrite the rest of the expression. So we'll have eight over one divided by two-thirds. Now remember to keep the first fraction as is. So we'll rewrite that as eight over one change the operation from division to multiplication and flip the second fraction by writing its reciprocal. 2 over 3 is going to become 3 over 2. Now that we have a multiplication problem again, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator and denominator to make the problem easier to multiply? Take a look at the numbers. Yes, we can. 2 and 8 have a common factor of 2. So we'll do 8 divided by 2. That changes the 8 into a 4. And in the denominator, 2 divided by 2 changes the 2 into a 1. Now there's nothing else to reduce, so we can go ahead and multiply. 4 and 3 will give us 12 in the numerator of our answer. And finally, multiplying 1 and 1 will give us 1 in the denominator of our answer. So there you have it. Any number divided by 1 is just that number, so our answer is 12 pieces. We can cut 12 2 3rd foot pieces from the board. Here's a final thought on dividing fractions and mixed numbers that I wanted to share with you. When you're dividing more than two fractions or mixed numbers, remember to work with just two fractions or mixed numbers at a time. Follow your order of operations. Remember what that is. When you encounter division problems, you work them in order from left to right to get the correct answer. Congratulations! You've learned how to divide fractions and mixed numbers.